Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> so, yeah, Los Cerros is focused in uh, Colombia. Um, we're focused on the mid coca porphyry belt. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Uh, it's, it's an area that has a, has a lot of significant discoveries, and I'll show you that on a, on a map shortly. On this slide, the only two things I really want to draw your attention to is the EV per resource ounce. Uh, it's incredibly low compared to our peers. And uh, for those of you who use EV per resource ounce as a, as a measure of investment opportunity, uh, hopefully you see that as a significant opportunity uh, for us. And the other point I want to raise here is in the shareholder base. You'll see there that we have uh, North American institutions at 10%. We raised uh, $20 million last year, and uh, $10 million of that went to two Tier 1 precious metal expert um, funds out of the out of the US uh, for, for roughly 5% each. So we have that North American presence in the, um, in the share registry. Uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we sit on the mid coca porphyry belt. That's that yellow strip you can see on the map there and hosted by or surrounded by many uh, multi-million ounce discoveries from uh, Buritika in the north, which is truly a once in a generation type discovery, an incredible discovery through to La Colossa in the south. And the area that we're in is uh, particularly uh, dense for, for discoveries. We have uh, two project areas, the Andes Project and the Kinchia Project. The Andes Project is all very early stage, so I won't talk about that much. It's the Kinchia Project that's seen the, the bulk of our attention uh, over the last few years. And that consists of 2.6 million ounce resource, grading at a gram per tonne. And within that is the Miraflores uh, Reserve and the Definitive Feasibility Study. There's about 460,000 ounces of reserve sitting there. And more recently, we revealed the Tesserito resource, which depending on how you cut it, is, uh, is, is 1.3 million ounces at 0 0.81 is one way of cutting it. Um, and there's obviously a significant uh, opportunity in the Kinchia area and of course in the Andes area. The Andes area is nine times the size of the Kinchia area, but uh, very early stage. We're well funded. As I said, we raised 20 million last year. We still have around 14 million of that. So um, we're, we're in a strong position. And uh, we're very much part of the local community and part of the local economy. Uh, we're, we're 130 odd people at the moment, 128 of those are Colombian. So it's just myself and the CFO that are not. So we're very much entrenched in the, in the local community and a very experienced uh, team. Next slide, please. So the main focus, as I said, is the Kinchia project. Uh, the area on that map there where you can see the soil dots that's all our, our ground there. So most of that map is our properties. Uh, you can see Miraflores roughly central in the image there. That's an 840,000 ounce resource. And within that is the reserve that I mentioned, mentioned before. About 800 metres away from that is Tesserito. That's the uh, at surface porphyry uh, gold discovery that's been the bulk of our attention for the last two years. Uh, as I said, about 800 metres apart and about two kilometres to the northwest is Dos Cabratas, which is a 460,000 ounce resource uh, sitting up there. You can see uh, just in the, the distribution of targets of interest for the company that there seems to be this um, north-south trend uh, defined by the Mamoto Fault Corridor. That seems to be a major uh, plumbing system for the gold and, and we are um, very excited by the number of um, targets we have in the area. Uh, from Chuskal to the south, right up to Mericielo in the north. Uh, next slide, please. So this is kind of like our trophy slide. Uh, I put this in here just to show that uh, some of the drill intercepts we're getting in this Kinchia area, this three kilometre um, radius area, particularly Tessery time, Mira Flores, are globally significant intercepts, uh, 629 metres at 0.88, uh, starting on the surface. And if you look there, fourth one down, 320 metres at one and a half grams per tonne. And again, pretty much starting on the surface with 100 metres of that grading, two grams per tonne. They're incredibly um, good results for a porphyry. And what makes them even more spectacular, particularly for Tesserito, is that it starts on the surface. So a lot of these 200 plus gram metre intercepts that we've got, and we've got many of them, uh, pretty much start on surface, which is unheard of. Um, next slide, please. So let's uh, dive a little deeper into the Kinchia uh, mineral resource. It's made up of those three areas, Tesserito um, with uh, 1.3 million ounces uh, at 0.81 using a 0.5 cutoff. Uh, there is another way of cutting that using a 0.25 gram per tonne cutoff, which obviously gives you more ounces. 
Uh, and Dos Quebradas, the, the um, 459,000 there, and the Miraflores Reserve to give you a total of 2.6 million ounces at a gram per tonne. And the image there on the, on the right is the optimised pitch shell from which the 1.3 million ounces was generated. And within that is a starter pit. And I'll talk about that starter pit uh, in, in a minute because that creates quite an interesting permutation for us. But what we're doing at the moment is uh, progressing through the early stages of a Kinshia wide PEA, Preliminary Economic Assessment or, or Scoping Study, looking at all three, so Tesserito, Dos Cabratas and Miraflores, because they're all very close to each other. It begs the question, can, can a uh, hub and spoke model uh, work and, and capture all of this material? So that's part of the Kinshi PEA. And um, we're progressing through the early parts of the metallurgy on Tesserito right now, and I'll talk about that um, on the next slide. Next slide, please. So this is the Tesserito inferred resource, the one that um, uh, I've used to contribute to the Kinshia wide resource is the one in yellow there, the um, 1.3 million ounces of 0.81. But as I said um, in a few slides back, what's unusual about Tesserito is the um, high grade porphyry core actually daylights, it actually hits the surface, uh, which means we've got near surface high grade and we've drilled through that many times. But that begs the question, do we actually have a high grade potential starter pit within the larger um, operations. So we ran that exercise. We used an artificial cutoff of 0.8 grams per tonne. Obviously, material below 0.8 is, is potentially economical, but we used the 0.8 to um, artificially constrain the, the resource to this high-grade core that, that daylights. And what we got out of that was 540,000 ounces grading 1.23 grams per tonne. So that's really exciting and, and really um, you know, compelling because obviously the early years of any production scenario would exploit this high grade area and therefore offset the capital burden of building the plant in the first place and, and therefore giving more robust economics. What's also really interesting about this is that because we used a 0.8 cutoff to give the 540,000 ounces, that means the waste in this area is, in the most part, not waste. It's um, material between 0.25 and 0.8 or 0.5 and, and 0.8, which you would clearly not define as waste in an operating environment. You would stockpile that. So once you've um, broken the, uh, the back of the, of the um, capital costs, et cetera, in production, you would then start exploiting those stockpiles because all you need then is to obviously offset the, um, the operating costs of, of processing that material. Uh, and so, you know, there's 540,000 ounces, but there's also some 300,000 ounces of this lower grade material there that um, technically you would call waste because you've used a point A cutoff, but it actually is um, more than likely economic as well. Now, I just mentioned earlier, we've just completed some metallurgical test work. In fact, our share price has had a bit of a run today on the back of the, uh, those results released yesterday. And what was came out of that, which was really reassuring, is um, it's a, a very vanilla uh, process. The last thing someone wants is complexities in the metallurgical processing. And uh, this is about as vanilla as it can get. So um, that's very um, comforting, very reassuring that it's a simple crush, grind, cyanide, leaching and absorption process, um, a process that's been um, put in place thousands of times, hundreds of times, thousands of times around the world for, for decades. So very reassuring from that perspective. Next slide, please. So this is the Miraflores project. This is the one that's more advanced. It's about 800 metres away from Tesserito. Uh, you can see the economic metrics from that reserve from 2017 there. I think what's worth pointing out here is that at 1400 US dollars an ounce, so not today's gold price, but at 1400 and using an 8% discount on the NPV, so a relatively conservative uh, discount rate there, it's running at about 90 million uh, NPV. And that's on a CapEx of about $72 million in 2017 prices. And you can see the all-in sustaining cost there as well. So it's a nice little project. It's, it's sort of 40,000 ounces per annum type production. So it's not, it's not huge, but um, it's, a, it's a nice little learner. And um, you also have to factor in that 800 metres away is uh, Tesserito. Now, Miraflores is going through um, final um, drafting of submissions for the, um, for the EIA, which is the last step in getting approvals to mine at, uh, at Miraflores, if we chose to do so. Uh, next slide, please. So this is our project pipeline. And this is another thing that I think is quite unique for, um, for Los Cerros. Uh, we do have a classic 
uh, project pipeline. We've got Miraflores there sitting in, um, in reserve status and, and, as I mentioned, going through final um, submissions. That uh, combined with Tesserito and Dos Cabradas leads to the Kinchia project preliminary economic assessment, which is essentially started with the, the fact that we're doing the metallurgy on Tesserito and it'll be a focus for, for um, the second half of 2022. But sitting behind that in this project pipeline, there's a great number of, uh, of other targets that uh, we hope to see you know, get attention. Uh, Clara, Sebal, Chuskal are all part of that Kinchia area. Uh, and the, uh, the yellow ones you can see there are, are the um, Andes portfolio. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is our ESG slide, and you can see uh, lots of um, great numbers there. We have a very strong ESG focus. Um, I think the most important one is the one I raised earlier, that essentially everyone in the company is Colombian and most of them live in Kinchia, which means we're very much part of the local community and part of the, um, part of the local economy. And that, that puts us in very good um, standing with the, with the local communities. Uh, next slide, please. So in summary, uh, we're in a prime location. We're in the mid-Colca Porphyry Belt, which already hosts many multi-million ounce discoveries. Uh, strong cash position, some 14 million in cash at the moment. Uh, we've got the advanced project at Kinchia, which does have a reserve, but um, also has Tesserito as an inferred resource at 1.3 million ounces for a total of 2.6 million ounces at a gram per tonne. The metallurgy, um, I've released the, the, the bulk of the metallurgical results yesterday, but there's still a few more bits and pieces to come through on there on silver recoveries and various other bits and pieces. And that will feed into the PEA. We have a strong ESG focus um, uh, and I, I look forward to talking more about that in, uh, in coming months as we have a few projects on the ESG front that uh, are getting some steam behind them and a very experienced um, board and a very strong uh, local team. And that's essentially it. Thank you, Jason. We've got uh, quite a few questions coming through <laughs> here, probably, probably through uh, from a, quite astute investors, I suggest. Um, so can you talk through the, there's a change of government, I believe. Can you talk through the implications of a new government for this project? Yeah. Um, so uh, President-elect Petro, uh, he comes into power in, in August. So the elections were last month and he comes into power in August. He, um, his views as sort of communicated through the uh, election campaign are very heavily focused on environment, on ESG, which is, you know, that's a contemporary view that most leaders have. Uh, and on uh, lifting the um, living status, living quality of, of the most um, uh, disadvantaged of, of the Colombian community. So that's, that's the, the focus he has. And in terms of uh, Los Cerros, I think our credentials on all three of those things is, is pretty strong. Uh, we are um, very contemporary, if not leading, on some of our ESG initiatives in the local area. And uh, we have obviously have a very strong environmental focus and the fact that we are essentially entirely Colombian and uh, employ a lot of local people, particularly out of, out of difficult um, industries like artisanal mining and those sorts of things, puts us in a pretty good standing from that position. Uh, but, you know, of course, he has, um, he has a very strong environmental focus. Um, I think there's lots of people paraphrasing each other at the moment on limited um, knowledge of what um, President-elect Petro's government is going to be and, and how he's going to work with the Congress. Uh, I think at this moment, even though it doesn't really leave some concerns out there, some ambiguity out there, it's really a case that we just need some uh, time to see how Petro balances the, um, the, the various priorities he's placed on his uh, government for the next four years. In terms of us immediately, um, there, there are sort of three things that we're focused on at the moment. One is finishing the Miraflores um, studies and, and submissions, because that is an underground operation and, and relatively small scale, but also moving on this bigger Tesserito story uh, and developing that side as well, which means also doing the, the PEA and those sorts of things to essentially de-risk um, the more advanced assets that we have in the company. And, and um, just on those Miraflora results, what's, what's the significance and what's the read through? On the, on the mirror for on the, results? Yeah, just the, there's a question here on the recent drill results. Uh, uh, oh, okay, on, on the expiration results, I see. Um, yeah. Yeah, so what that has told us, and this is an announcement that we put out to the market a few weeks ago, I think that's what the question is about. Uh, essentially, what that has told us is that Tesserito and Miraflores, yes, they're 800 metres apart, and they probably are part of, of one 
system at depth, uh, the, the shallower material that we drilled through in recent programs didn't hit anything um, economically exciting between the two. Uh, perhaps there is connections between the two uh, at depth, but where we drilled through, there wasn't particularly anything compelling there. But what it did do, and this is um, quite interesting, is it actually continued drilling past that zone between Miraflores and Tesserito and went under Miraflores. And we hit Breccia, which is the, 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 um, the unit that hosts the Miraflores gold. Uh, we hit that at great depth, uh, and uh, that raised the opportunity or the possibility or, or ask the question, does Miraflores continue considerably beyond the bottom of the existing defined um, reserve envelopes? And uh, we're testing that right now with a, with a drill hole as we speak. And there's just another question here, kind of what, what's the, the focus for the next uh, one to five years? The area sure, of yeah. So at the moment, the focus, given that we've got you know, some obviously difficult markets for juniors out there, is to uh, ramp or sort of dial down the, the speculative activity, the, the early stage uh, exploration, and focus on building um, robust numbers around our existing assets. So that means advancing Miraflores. It means um, doing the metallurgy and the PEA on, on Tesserito and those sorts of things, and then getting into the, the, the PEA proper for the whole of King Chia. And what that, um, I suspect, will tell us in the early parts of that PEA is um, which of the numerous options we have we should focus on. And to be, be brief, but to cover those options, there are essentially three pathways and the number of hybrids between those pathways. But the three pathways are, do we, do we focus on Miraflores, the underground operation, the, the small scale operation that is DFS stage? Do we focus on that? Or do we focus on that slightly larger scenario, significantly larger scenario really, uh, of Tesserito and Miraflores put together, that starter pit of Tesserito and Miraflores put together and develop that story? Or do we go all out and build uh, and design a project for the 2.6 million ounces we already have and, and who knows how much else we will find in coming years? So in terms of the pathway, the, the first step is to explore those options and then select from that the subset that we should advance further over coming years. And I must say, there's a couple of questions here that are exactly on that topic, and I just want to make sure we've, we'll get to them. I had to put my glasses on. It's a bit hard to read. Um, what will be the next exploration target? Any priority targets going back to Miraflores um, and others or the um, pink blob between Miraflores and Tesserito? Yeah, the pink blob is the one I was talking about before, so I think I've, I've gotcha. covered that. Um, no, look, I, I think uh, we, we are conducting a geological review uh, right now. So we're looking at all the data because obviously it's moved on dramatically over the last two years with um, five rigs running continuously 24 hours a day for two years. So uh, lots of data to assimilate. Uh, if you ask me personally where I think the exciting targets sit right now, I think Sebal and, and, um, and, and Chuskal um, look, uh, have not been explained, I guess is the best way of putting that. There's fantastic smoke in, in the drilling results and the surface footprint is, is quite exciting but we haven't actually explained why they're there. We haven't found the causative porphyry in either of those, and they're particularly compelling. But really, it's they're compelling to me because we haven't done the same in-depth exercise of the five or six other targets that we have in the area. They might be equally compelling once we've done this geological review. And and kind of news flow moving forward, what, what can shareholders expect? Yeah. Uh, so we put out the MET results yesterday. Uh, now, as I've said in that announcement, the, um, the next steps on that is to progress that further. So we have more metallurgy to do, and then that will feed into the PEA. And in the background, we have dialed it down, but in the background, we have exploration running. So there'll be exploration news for us as well. Jason, that's all we have time for. Nice to have you back on uh, Hidden Gems webinar. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Tim.